Destiny put some fortunate people in the right place at the right time, and that was certainly true for Clarence Nash. Little did he dream that a chance audition at a cartoon studio in the early 1930s would lead to a 50-year career as the voice and alter ego of a world-famous star. Oh boy, this was hot. At the age of 29, and in the midst of the Great Depression, Clarence was earning a living working for the Ador Milk Company in Los Angeles, driving a miniature milk wagon pulled by pint-sized horses, and making personal appearances doing his extensive repertoire of bird and animal imitations. Walt remembered hearing whistling Clarence, the Ador Birdman, do his recitation of Mary Had a Little Lamb on a local radio show. Nash later said he got his job by auditioning for animation director Wilfred Jackson at the Hyperion Street studio. Either way, Walt loved the voice and hired Nash in 1933. Neither one knew what a long-standing association it would become. Donald, the people are waiting. <laughs> Clarence Nash was born in Watonga, Oklahoma on December 7, 1904 and grew up on a farm. He was a typical class clown and found early on that he had a gift for imitating the sounds of various animals and birds. He later dropped out of high school to pursue his show business ambitions and played at Chautauqua shows around the country. In 1930, he married his lifelong companion, Margie, and promised her to look for steadier work, which led the couple to Los Angeles, where radio offered opportunities. Once on the Disney staff, Nash acquired the nickname Ducky, which stayed with him the rest of his life, even though he contributed a variety of other voices to Disney cartoons, TV shows, and theme park attractions over the decades. He voiced Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and even Daisy at different times. Played a bullfrog in Bambi, watch out, and some dogs in 101 Dalmatians. But Donald Duck was his mainstay. That meant he worked right alongside the boss when the two of them voiced Mickey and Donald together. And he even got an opportunity to appear on screen as himself with vocal colleague Florence Gill in the behind-the-scenes feature, The Reluctant Dragon, with humorist Robert Benchley. <laughs> like so many other great cartoon voice artists, Ducky was a fine singer, which came in handy for Donald's many musical moments, including his co-starring role in the Disney feature film, The Three Caballeros. <laughs> Over the years, Donald acquired a handful of catchphrases, and the studio gag writers learned what kind of dialogue sounded clear coming from the duck's mouth and what didn't. Big guess. Can't understand me. Big or fat head. Oh, can't understand you. Must be that flat beak of yours. Can't mouth the words right. Why, you pigeon brain, you just don't like kick your dad. Oh, yeah? Well, listen to this. Well, you pepper, pick your pepper, pick your pepper, fool it. Can't understand it myself. Ducky was a frequent visitor to the Mickey Mouse Club in the 1950s and entertained children for years with a Donald Duck doll that enabled him to relive his vaudeville youth and hear the sound of laughter from appreciative audiences. In the latter part of his life, Clarence Nash delighted in hearing from fans and basked in the recognition he received as one of the most familiar voices in all the world. I never get mad. No, you never get mad. That's right. I'm an actor. You're an actor, and that explains it all. He was a popular figure throughout Donald Duck's 50th anniversary year in 1984, and was present when Donald put his hand in web prints in cement at the historic Grauman's Chinese Theater. But Clarence, like Donald, doesn't really need a monument. He and his ducky pal have achieved immortality on film. Watch <laughs> 
Thank you.